thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we are glad to be here today. And I want to welcome you to our session about metaverse, that it's not a, uh, not a door, it's a stair. So um, I went to the exhibition hall today and I saw all this very, very awesome tech startups and, and uh, companies. And we thought of, no, I, it's, it's not necessary to, to talk about the advantages of new technologies or the new solutions or anything. Maybe our, a little bit. Uh, yeah, our, uh, our session is not about the tech, maybe a little bit about the tech. Um, it's more about empowering people. It's about the people who use the solutions and how to bring the society to the point where um, Metaverse is getting relevant and where it's getting to a real benefit. Okay, then let's dive in. Let's dive in. Let's start with the easy one. So the question is, what do these pictures have in common? You know, any idea? Don't know. You lie, you know the <laughs> <laughs> But they very different, but they have something in common. Okay. Both are workplaces. This is what they have in common. This is what we've learned through the pandemic. And they have some things in common. From my, it was my, pers my really personal perspective when I were at the home office. So maybe you can agree with some of it. So it was always not enough space for all my stuff. Second thing is I, I had distraction all the time because we have kids at home, um, postman, in the most critical meetings, always is ringing at the door. Um, always bad network connectivity <laughs> and nobody who is fixing because the IT is not there. Um, have really poor equipment sometimes, and this is something you have in the, in the manufacturing business as well. Poor ergonomics because some of us work on the kitchen table or something, which is not very ergonomic. The same thing in the, in the manufacturing business. And in my specific case, poor cantina. It was not that good, but it was my fault. But sometimes you have this in industry, industry uh, manufacturing companies as well. So, sounds funny sometimes, but we have learned it the hard way in the pandemic. So we really had these issues and a lot of social contacts in person got lost in that time. And it was pretty tough for us. It was very, very difficult to stay in contact and to drive business. And that was really merciless because business need to go further in the pandemic. So we had to find, we had, we had to find ways, we had to find um, technical things. I mean, Teams meetings, Google meetings, all that kind of meetings you have seen, most uh, spoken word and more spoken sentence. Can you hear me? Can you see me? That, is the th uh, that was our life for that two years, two and a half year. And, but this is not funny because in this time, we really, um, the need of physiological care exploded in that time. And this is really a very critical thing to see because we're talking about metaverse, we're talking about um, what we can do in VR, but if we need to stay at home and do collaboration to digital tools, <laughs> we need psychological care. And this is pretty uh, a point where we say, is it really always about the technology? So this is why we said it's not always about the technology. And in this talk, we want to strip that down to the th things that happens at community and society perspective. Um, a lot of companies comes out of the comes up in, in, in that pandemic time and, and drive a game that is called the modern workplace thing. A lot of companies um, pushed it further to, to create a modern workplace scenario. And <laughs> It was more, uh, I, I, would, I would say, an Apple kind of style when they say modern workplace is like this. So clean desk, white hardware, coffee cup, something that um, a shop floor frontline worker, I think, would not agree. 
And from our perspective and our experiences that we had with the customers and with, with our work with the customers, that is not true. This is not, this is not the modern workplace, or not just this. Modern workplace is also this, because this is where we live, this is where we work, and we don't change that that easy, because not everybody can do home office because frontline workers are necessary at the shop floor. So, but how we can improve the workplace of the future in this enterprise scenarios. It's not always the sleeky looking desk. It's the dirty hands machine as well. And yeah, why I tell you this? Because with this in mind, the upcoming statement on the next slide will become a new dimension or a new kind of new point of view. Because this is a statement everybody here in the room of this beautiful XR community knows because you heard that a lot of times, me as well, Nina as well, when we go out to the customer after a very cool extended reality demo showcase or a meeting about a business context in extended reality. It's this one. Put in what you want. Yeah? The stuff gets relevant in five to 10 years. It's always somebody in the room who say that at the customer side in five to 10 years. And this is, this is bad for us because lights go off and you are completely out of the conversation because in five to 10 years you come back and then you, you, sh you, you, did, you did a demo where you can see the technique is there right now, but it's five to 10 years. That's not cool. And the question is, is that really because of technical innovation? Is it really because of the technical stuff needs five to 10 years to come to a point where you can use it? And we say, we think, no. If we take a look on an uh, example of my private life. So my first cell phone was a Nokia 5110. It was ugly yellow and it was 1999. Nina doesn't know that, I think it was too young, but this, this cell phone, you, you, can, you can write SMS and can take a call. And the first iPhone come up on 2008, so it's nine years something. So is it really a technical thing to bring this from a Nokia cell phone to an iPhone with touch and all that stuff? And when, if I go to the expo, and you know, I mentioned before, if we go to this expo hall from this convention right now, you see all these hardcore technical companies with a lot of cool solutions, uh, pretty impressive, very innovative. You can see things of the future, but it's happened in the, in, right now, and you can use it, or you could use it. So we believe it's not five to 10 years because of the technical thing. It's more a society thing. It's more a, a thing of how long people need to bring this in their daily habits or in their understanding of using this technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's not only the technical possibilities, it's about social change. So why it is uh, about five to 10 years? Um, yeah, because it's not only the technical solutions that uh, have to be developed, um, it's a rethinking which, uh, which has to happen uh, the people who use modern or, or new technology solutions have to change their habits and there must be uh, something they can use. So you have to think about um, new stuff in the future, like for example, sustainability. Um, the example to re reduce traveling or, or something like that. It's also about creating full accessible solutions to provide a real value to the customer. So to get a real wide ac uh, acceptance in the mass, um, we have to understand the people and their concerns and their habits. So um, when we think about really modern technologies, for example, if you think about AI, every one of us heard the sentence um, of people who say, oh, I'm afraid I, I lose my job because of uh, artificial, and intelli artificial intelligence. And we have to understand the people and their needs. And we have to take a brief look at that and uh, find uh, the answer for the why. Why is it a good technology? Why is it a good idea to use a new technology? And, and that's, uh, that's the big point. 
And uh, that's the importance when we do technical uh, prototyping. It's not only the solution, it's also the social part of it. To, yeah, to get a, a little example, um, I brought to you um, a little story from, from us. It's uh, one uh, project we did in the, uh, in the past. Um, we did um, a project for San Pauli. I don't know if you uh, know the team. It's a soccer club in, uh, in uh, Germany. And, um, More famous for their social engagement than their sports yeah. performance. <laughs> yes. They have a very social uh, uh, impact. And it's very important for them um, that they yeah, have a very accessible uh, stadium and everything. And they have this museum. It's a museum about their soccer club. And they wanted it uh, as accessible as possible. And also, Sao Pauli has a very, big, um, com uh, a very big community of visual impaired uh, football fans. And so they were thinking about, <clears throat> it's, it's a little bit sad that visual impaired people can't uh, yeah, can experience uh, the exhibition uh, the way they should. They always need uh, uh, someone who goes with them, who guides them to the, uh, uh, through the exhibition, who reads out loud all texts in the exhibition. So it's not a good experience for them. And that's where uh, we started to work with uh, Sam Pauli and thought about possibilities to, uh, yeah, to solve this issue. And so because But we what was the issue? So we think it was, a, we, we thought about a different issue that yeah. issue really yeah. was. Yes, uh, that's the point. So we thought, we, we love tech. So we thought, oh, what can we do with, uh, with the HoloLens? It was HoloLens 1. Um, it was quite the cool stuff at, uh, at this time. And we thought, oh yeah, we have this cool 3D cameras and we can uh, use these cameras in the, in the HoloLens to, um, to uh, track the, the, the surrounding of the blind person and to guide them through the exhibition so he don't need uh, the stick which he usually uh, uses to guide himself uh, through the exhibition. And we thought this is the big game changer. So he can go through the uh, exhibition on his own and he doesn't need his stick. Then we talked to some, some people uh, who are blind and they told us that's not the need, that's not the problem. They uh, want to use their stick and it's important for them for their orientation. We can't take this away from them, and they don't need a technical solution not, for, it's not because for of this. the orientation. It's it's really a, a, a sign that they are blind for other people. So they say, that if, you know, I have a I have a stick, so everybody knows I'm blind and can take care of it. And if I give that to, give it up, so yeah. nobody can can realize that. And this was really an eye-opening thing for us because we try to use this technology in a very technical way. We can do this spatial awareness thing and we can do this, this PD. The first version uh, it was like you, you park a car with park distance control, beep, 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 all the time. And it was, uh, two, after, two years later, it was completely stupid what we planned or yeah, what we thought absolutely. that no, somebody needed. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it, yeah. That, that wasn't a good solution, so we rethink the whole project and um, talked to the people and said, hey, what do you really need? And then we came to the conclusion that it's more important to get uh, the right information from the exhibition at the, at, the right, uh, yeah, at the right time. And so we developed a solution with the HoloLens that um, we um, make information points, audio points, in the whole exhibition. And one uh, audio point, we call it an audio bubble, is uh, making, a, making a sound. And you have this, this cool spatial sound in the HoloLens. So you can hear the sound coming from right in front of you. And then the blind person can use the HoloLens with the cool sound to guide himself to, to this uh, point in the exhibition. So he follows the, the, it's like a sonar sound. And when he reaches this point, he gets uh, the information from, for example, the exhibit from the tricot he, he, he's seeing. But it's, but it's a provided, but it's a provided um, um, part of the exhibition. It's not um, the brother or the wife, and I ask, hey, what, what can you see? It's like, oh, it's boring. Yeah, so. It's not happening. So you get the full information and you get a, a good experience in, in knowledge, in fun, in... Yeah. Yeah. So we brought the, the uh, relevant information to, to the people. They can hear the information on the, on the glasses and yeah, walk through the, the exhibition uh, on their own. 
and uh, get all the information they want to know. And yeah, that's a little bit uh, of the thing that we used these glasses not for the thing that's uh, usually for, not for seeing cool holographic uh, um, content. We used it to empower people. And that's why the solution is uh, still in, uh, in use. Uh, and we have very good feedback for the solution um, because we try to, to fit the needs of, uh, of our yeah. Fun fact is they want, if they want to expand the system right now because they realize that people who are not visual impaired want the system as well because the information is better because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an acoustic thing. You don't need to read something. Yeah. For lazy guys, this, uh, that is a cool thing. And uh, they used uh, the, the, the voice of the, of the stadium speaker for uh, all the text, and that was a very yeah, iconic it was thing. Pretty cool, so yeah. It was it's pretty, pretty cool, cool to listen. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So um, that is uh, always the way that we at Inclusify approach uh, such projects. So we don't uh, start with the with the technique, uh, the, the tech stuff. So, um, we start by this three steps, and the first thing is always learning. It's always understanding our customers and their needs. So at first, we take a step back and understand the users. We, we talk to the people uh, who are going to use the software. We, um, on the other hand, try to do like a little bit technical envisioning so our customers understand what uh, devices are, are possible or which possibilities they have. And um, yeah, we do some practical impressions. And at the what, start. What, what Nina mentioned before is a pretty tough one when it comes to the XR devices. So um, we, we'll talk about it in a sec, but it, in a second, because it's, it's really that thing that um, it's like an iPhone. A manager comes in and, and asks for an XR device, and you say, there's a HoloLens, there's a Magic Leap, there's a whatever. You know this device is better than me. And everybody thinks that there's the device the device, one device to rule them all, and this is a pretty hard decision right now. So this is more a Lord of the Rings movie than a, a business decision, and this is this is pretty tough on that point. This is really we spend a lot yeah. of, of time to 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 not they, they come with I've they have seen one device and then I want to do everything with it, and this is really a, a tough one on that point. Yes, that's true, and we also want to stand, uh, understand the the business challenges. So we want to understand in which cases uh, will we need the software, and we try to try to look, uh, take a look at the data as well, because we often have the problem that our customers have much data, but it's not uh, prepared to be used, for example, in extended reality or something. So that's a big point, too. And then we try to do, um, it's a method called Solution Canvas. We try to, um, to make uh, use cases and, uh, yeah, and look on, uh, on the pros and cons. And that's always so the first step, just Learn from uh, from the people and try to understand uh, try to understand them and get them involved. And how to measure and how to measure the KPIs if it's necessary if it's really a business relevant topic or not, and the KPIs so you can track if people and processes are in line or really do it or is that uh, the acceptance criteria, as the developer would say, is very important in the solution canvas as well. Yes. In the, second, uh, in the second step, uh, we are in the, f uh, in the phase of proving. So that's uh, usually Marco's playground, your favorite playground, is to develop uh, proof of concepts. And uh, yeah, now we get the technic, uh, the tech involved, and, and see what we can do with a solution. But it's always, um, it's always uh, the step where we uh, take a close look and measure. We want to understand how is uh, the software or the product used what can we learn and what can we improve in, in our process or in how we empower the people who use uh, the software or the tool. Yeah, right, and the adoption thing is bring it day to, in, a day to, in a daily base of um, the people that you have to use it, like the service stuff, as we mentioned before, frontline workers, they, if they use it because we, we had frontline, we had a, a customer that say, yeah. come help us to bring this environment uh, to the next level and help us to figure out which system is working for us. And um, they ask us a lot of technical stuff. And uh, the first question we ask is, what is the expectation of your stuff on the frontline, frontline workers? And um, then we started to talk with the frontline workers and they said, I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm 50, I, 58 years old, I have seven years till retirement, not with me. 
And so there was a lot of work and a lot of um, dealing why questions yes, I, and, and yeah. say, hey, come on, you, you get a new job because you are on the assistant side. You don't need to fly, you need to travel, just do the young stuff, young, young guys. We send them and you, be, you are the, the pro that help on the assistant side. I said, hey, I need to, don't need to travel the last eight years. Fine. And then it was our biggest ambassador in the project. This is what happened. I and mean, this is very important because we have a, a sample um, where you can see the solution right now. Can you switch next one? So one of my favorite customers. Oh, sorry. How are you Back. doing? Why is it not playing? I'm not sure. Video is not playing. Is it possible to start the video? Mm -mm. No? No, it's not, it's not playing. Oh, oh is it? now no, it's, it's playing. Now it's working. Awesome. Okay. So um, we have one customer um, is, is still with us. Um, they, uh, it's, a, it's a soft drink manufacturer in, in, in Germany, make world's best cola made in Germany. And what they have, they have a, a lot of stuff for um, the, for supermarket, for restaurants, for stuff like that, to put the stuff in. And the, 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 the goal of this very first project we did together, this pro uh, proof of concept was not just, is it, is it technical, a technical thing to bring this product into an iPad or an iPhone and doing this. It was, uh, it, do our sales stuff using this with a customer, or they just put everything in the car and drive hundreds of kilometers. Now, just look, that's a question, and this is what we evaluate right now. Um, and you, what you see here is, if you are in the XR community very familiar, familiar this is, um, this, it's, just, <laughs> it's lame when you see what's, hap what's, what's, what's possible in the exhibition, but what, the good story is, what I can tell you from the customer side, if you show this uh, regular customers in the industry or in the enterprise, they say, wow, what is that? This is my product, I can use that. So much possibility. I don't need to travel, I can go, can go virtually to my customers without traveling. And this is, this is empowering. And, but, the, but the question is, is your stuff on the same track as you in the management? And this is what you need to figure out and what you, you find, you need to find question, you need to find the answers to the questions when it comes to the why, why should I do this? From a very business perspective, but from a very personal perspective as well. So. Yeah, um, I, um, I, I also think that uh, here um, the solution is quite simple maybe. And I'm, yeah, it's not the, the big game changer in extended reality, but um, it's a practical solution. And uh, yeah, you can have it on your phone, you just uh, put it on your, uh, the app on your phone and can take it with you. It's not the thing that um, a salesman has to take the HoloLens with him. I know the experience on a HoloLens is maybe way, cooler. It's way, way cooler back, and way cooler. immersive, but um, I think that sometimes we have to take a step back and, and look where are the people now and uh, where can we get them to, to our solutions. That's what I mentioned before, iPhone or an Android phone in our daily, in our daily behavior do so much tasks at the day, different tasks of our life and this extended reality devices right now are pretty to one specific point and then I need a different one. And we're not in that daily thing, that device that can handle everything. Yeah. And this is what people have in the pocket. And this is you can get very easy in a daily, in a daily base or in a, in a, in a daily habit thing. And um, with this project, um, you, you, you can answer a lot of questions. That for us, they are very easy. But for a customer, it's not easy. So how can I get my products in digital way because I don't have this? So I have text, I have PDFs, and I have all that stuff, but how can I get this, this product in, in, in that visual way? And this is something we have to answer, because if there's no data, you have nothing you can put in a metaverse or an XR environment. So this, mm -hmm. is, this is a very easy one. Yeah, and I, I also uh, think that it's a quite important step before you get to the, to the last point of our three steps, it's uh, adopt. Because it's, it's really cool if you have a nice technical solution and if you give it to your uh, customer and say, much fun and goodbye. 
So that's not the way you, you have to think about that. It's important to get uh, along with the customer and with the users, that you uh, do adoption, that you uh, talk to the users, that you involve them in the process uh, to get the acceptance uh, you want to. And um, yeah, because it's a, it's a change process. It's always a change if you uh, get a new soft software or a new solution. So it now happens what what I, what I thought, we are running out of time, so um, let's bring this up, bring this to the end. Um, we, the, the XR community is working on stuff like that. So we have this, this in the news that Apple has a patent application right now where they have like tracking in their, in their AI, in AI glasses. I mean, come on, seriously, you don't need this to drive XR business right now. If you're waiting for this, we have wait five to 10 years <laughs> yeah. for maybe. But I think what we have learned in the pandemic in the last two or three years, especially in the enterprise, is the power of video is a very powerful one. And it could be the stairs to the metaverse if you can combine this. This uh, traditional thing, what people, have in their, what people have in their pocket and what they have learned in the last years about the power of video. When you take a look on, on, on manufacturing companies, they have problems with their machines in Brazil or something, and you can, um, you can travel because there's a pandemic. They do this with WhatsApp video right now. I mean, uh, three years ago, we went in this company and they say, no, this is a legal issue because there's a camera in the HoloLens in front, you will never come to the shop floor, and now they do this with WhatsApp video. <laughs> I mean, that is crazy, but it's, 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 it's the reality, and so, to short this, um, we skip that because you can you can you can really uh, figure out we have a solution where we combine the mixed reality th things that you see in the in the Fritz Cola prototype together with a video call and it's called Inclusify in use. This is our approach to to bring this video collaboration thing to the next level with a little bit of metaverse and building us there. So come to the booth. Uh, we have a booth in the, in the exhibition and test it out, and get some cola for free, good cola for free. So, thanks for having us. I'm Marco Richardson. I'm the founder and CEO um, of Inclusify, and more the, the techie. And with me, we have Nina. Nina can tell you a lot of uh, stories and things in the digital change and transformation because she's our product manager and has the connection to our customers. Thank you. Thank you very much.